Yo, what's good, people? It's Jay Cactus, and we're back again with episode eight of Cactus Convos. Today, I've got another sick producer with me, real special guest this time. He's got some crazy credits. He's worked with people like Roddy Rich, Rich the Kid. I've seen Soldier Boy credits, done a lot of work with Manchester writers as well, like Tunde. Yo, the list is just endless. He goes by Legendary Keys. So what's good, my bro? What's good, bro? What are you saying, bro? It's good to have you on, man. I know you haven't done many interviews, have you? Yeah, nah, never, bro. I've never done them before, you know. First time for everything, man. (laughs) Yeah, come on, bro. But yo, I... There's so many things I want to go through in this podcast. You've got some, even yeah. just reading them credits out there, and there's some crazy credits there. And yeah, I know it I hasn't know. been like an easy story. I know you've worked hard to get to that point. So before we yeah. get into all of them credits, let's just take it way back. So if you could just okay. give me a little overview, talk to me about how you even got into producing, how you started making beats, like where it all started. Okay. Um, so bro, to be honest, yeah, mm. when I first started, um, I didn't even think I was going to be a producer, bro. Like, I never thought of it, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I got kicked out of college, kicked out of school. From there, I thought, yo, what am I going to do next? Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mum yeah. was telling me to get a job and finally got a shitty little job. And I didn't like it, bro. I thought, fuck this, I'm, I'm doing something else. Yeah. And one of my mates, it was about five years ago, he came out, came out to my house. He was like, oh, what do you do? I was like, nothing, bro. Like, nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I cooked out. And he goes, um, he makes beats. So yeah. I was like, all right, you make beats. So you give me the program, and from there, bro, it just, it just. The rest is history. Magic. <laughs> yeah, it was the rest of history, bro. Is that FL Studio then? Yeah, FL Studio 12 now, man. Yeah. So how many years ago yeah. is this? Like, when did you first open about FL Studio? About five, years ago. about five, six years ago. Five, six years ago. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. when you when you first started, what kind of beats were you making? Was it always like UK rap? We did like boom bap. Beats, are, like trappy beats. You know what I'm saying? The old yeah. school trap beats. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't really have a sound right now. How like, like my Detroit sounds? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear that. So yeah. you've been like back then. What was your your game plan when you first started off? Were you just trying to just trying to make beats? Were you were you doing like the YouTube thing? Were you sending beats out to yeah, artists? Uh, to, be honest, bro, to be honest, it was a hobby thing. It was just a joke at first with um, one of my old friends, uh, Kelly, in it. Yeah. He, he, oh, Kelly's my tight boy, man. Um, we used to we used to cook up beats on. on in, in you know those little speakers that you used to get little water speakers yeah yeah used to yeah get the speakers to that in mm-hmm. it and just go try and make beats and that when I first started in it yeah um, but yeah bro I didn't really know what I was where I was heading it Did- was just let's just make beats to see what it what happens you know what I'm saying of course yeah how were you learning as well was it your boy showing you everything or were you learning through no, tutorials like- me- nah nah bro I didn't watch no tutorials you give me the project yeah. uh, not the project he gave me the FL Studio. Yeah. And bro, when the first time I opened it, I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah. There's so many things that like, you can dial. Yeah, bro. Like... So I'm going through it and I just learned myself. Yeah. How to use it. You just got to dive straight in the deep end, didn't it? Like, you just got to play with yeah, things, definitely. tweak things, dragging sounds. I take it you didn't have any, like, music theory knowledge. You didn't play any instruments or anything like that either. No, nah, bro. No, nah, not at all, bro. I never even thought I'd do music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But what kind of what kind of stuff were you listening to though? Or what was like the real inspiration? Was it? Did you always have a passion for music, or was it just like you seen your boy do it? No, and you thought, you know, what, I, I could try this. I listened to a lot of music, hip hop yeah. songs, and old school Tupac. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, yeah, that old school songs. But I didn't. I was never, never thought of being a musician. You know what I'm saying? Or making yeah. beats or producer. Yeah, I hear that. So obviously, five years is like a long time to get to this point so there's obviously been yeah. a lot during that come up so talk to yeah. me about so you first started making beats you were just yeah. doing it as like a hobby so when did you start taking it serious when did you think you know what i'm gonna try and make this a career i'm gonna just go all in with this to be honest it took me a year to to, to, to even learn how to use the program it yeah. took me a year and the next year i just learned how to like physically find a sound yeah so i'm making beats and then um i think the next year after that I was, I was I was watching these you started watching YouTube so okay everyone started posting. Yeah. So I started watching more was selling the beats. I was like, I had to sell beats. So yeah. I was like, cool. Um then someone from my school bought a beat off me, I was like, <laughs> yeah, put in. And then I realized from there I could have I could start doing it, selling yeah. it to different rappers, you know what I'm saying? 
That first beat that you sell, that's the best one ever, isn't it? When you first no, make no, some money no. selling a beat, it's like, right, I could actually do this. Yeah, I thought I was the man bro back there when I first saw the first beat. Yeah. Well, I was the man I thought, yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> do you think your beats were good at that point as well? Like, only after yeah, a year? Yeah, going to say, with, with no tutorials, no nothing for a straight year, it can take yeah, some bro, time to practice. Studio, if I played them in the studio to an artist now, they would think, get the fuck out of the studio. <laughs> Yeah, that just happens man everyone starts off somewhere it, t- it takes yeah, a while it takes a while to get going this is why because i always get messages from producers on instagram and yeah. everything asking me like why the beats aren't selling why they're not yeah. getting anyone like on the beats and then i say yo send me a youtube channel like send me beats let me take a listen and then they send me the yeah. channel then they've got about five beats on there i go to the beat stars <laughs> you know the same again there's five beats on there there's no experience <laughs> no, no nothing it's like bro yeah. it takes time it takes time like I, yeah. It takes a long time. Mm. Like if you were to guess now, how many beats do you think you've got in your catalogue? In my beat stars, mm. um, about over 300. I don't really upload to beat stars as much, yeah. but you know, on my computer, I've got thousands. Thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah It takes yeah. a long time, man. It's just one of them things, like the more, you, the more you do it, the better you're going to yeah. get. There's, I tell everyone all the time, there's no shortcuts with this. There's, you can watch as many tutorials as you want, but until you start applying yeah. them techniques and actually doing it, you're not really going yeah, to improve. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So out of all of the the placements, uh, or who was like the first rapper that you got on your beat other than maybe someone that you were talking yeah, to in school, but the yeah. first one where you thought, yo, this is actually sick. I've got this guy on my beat. The first placement I ever got was a Soldier Boy placement. Was that and your that first one? Big, yeah, that was my first what? one. How the fuck did that happen? Because Soldier Boy, that's, that's a big name. I saw I saw Soldier Boy's producer um, in the studio with him, and he was like, "Yo, I'm do- this is a funny story." He was like, "I'm doing collabs." So yeah. I was like, "Yo, like, I didn't really have the money." I was thinking, "Yo, I want to do a collab." So anyway, I got the money together and I got him. I paid him about two hundred dollars for the collab, and uh, he goes, "Send over your tag, send over a melody." Da, da, da. Sent over, and it was shit. But <laughs> I thought I might as well the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? It might. Oh, so I paid him, um, I did a collab with him, sent it, and a few days later, I saw Soldier Boy working out to, to the beat, to the song. Oh, you just saw it on his so, Instagram or something? Or his... Yeah, on his Snapchat, he was, uh, or Instagram, I don't yeah. remember what it was. He was training in his gym to the song. What? That's and I mad. remember the beat, and I'm thinking, yeah, I was buzzing, bro. I was jumping around like, yo, that's I crazy. And, uh, but then the producer took my tag out. Uh, no way. Yeah, so then from there, bro, it just made me think, you know what, let me go harder. Than yeah. I've been before, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He gave me, he didn't give me my credits, so you still you still got all the credits, yeah? Yeah, no, I got all my credits. Yeah, but I'm talking about that one Soldier Boy placement. Right, he didn't credit me on it. You know what I'm saying? Really? So from there, it made me go harder and work on my own. And yeah, what? Let me keep going. Something else will happen, and then from there, opening doors. That seems doors like a, even though even though he's done that to you, I feel like that yeah. can't be too common i always think it's wise to invest in yourself and pay for collabs because opportunities do come out like that yeah, and even yeah, though he kind of yeah, fucked yeah, you over yeah. with the tag you yeah. still you've, you've still got that credit there you've still got a track that soldier boys jumped on yeah 100 percent. you know what i'm saying producer collabs is, is the way to go man yeah was that the first ever club that you paid for um yeah oh. first ever collab i paid for that's crazy man because usually you have to do yeah, something yeah. like that like quite a few times it's not just Right, the first club that you pay for, something major is going to happen. It might be like the fifth time, yeah, it might be the tenth time. It was weird, man. It was bad. Yeah. It's good that you invested that way, though, because a lot of people don't want to yeah. spend money. A lot of people, it's kind of like cool kid syndrome where they're like, no, nah, I'm not paying someone to collab with me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Well, that's how it is in this music industry. Do you know what I'm saying? Everyone thinks they're on top. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And obviously, if this other person's got a lot more experience and he's in the right rooms with people, then, then why not spend yeah. that money? Like you went out of your way, yeah, even though you didn't. I, that's what, sorry, that's why I always say yeah. to these producers, you know, I helped a lot of producers get their first placement and I just helped a producer get a placement on Fabio Fon's new album. That's crazy. So I just tell them always invest in yourself. Yeah. And it's not always about the money, you know what I'm saying? It's about if you've got a fire, then why not give them an opportunity to, to help them work with the network, like the people that you work with, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. So how, how did that happen then? Did he just message you on Instagram? Uh, produce like you know how producers do the DM you like my my DMs full of producers. Yo, yeah. let's collab. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's collab, but he hasn't got any money. 
Right. Like, like he's struggling to make sales. I don't want to mention his name, but yeah. So I said, all right, cool. You know what, bro? If you got some fire, email at me. And that's what I say to every producer if you can't afford, because everyone struggles, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So if you can't afford a collab, I said, all right, send me some fire. He sent me some fire, and I thought, you know what, bro? I'll give, I go, what's your number? I go, let's work, bro. Let's work back and forth, and let's try and get an placement for you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I first got him a placement, a five year foreign, and, um, one of my artists that I worked with and I flew to Manchester called Trev Muller. Yeah. So then um, after that, I just we started hitting placements back to back. I bet that guy loves you now, doesn't he? He's got that yeah, free collab yeah. plus a major yeah. placement. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. How did you meet Fabio, by the way? How did that first placement uh, happen? Yeah. Bro, it was through um, an artist, Trev Muller, that I was just talking about. Um, yeah. I've known Trev and Fabio for, for many years. Yeah. Before even five year was um was a big artist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember yeah. we was on big time and he was like, Yo, can you send me a beat, man? Let's get to the studio and I wanna come to the UK, do you know what I'm saying? How many years um, ago was this? Was this even when he was well, doing drill? Because I don't know what he was doing before. Well, but... This year when he was doing the old school New York drill. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The old school New York drill and when he wasn't doing the UK drill. And yeah. then um I remember we was on FaceTime and he was like, Yo, he was telling me about his life story and he told me, yo, man, I want to see like UK money. So I showed him UK money, not to brag, but just to motivate, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember, bro, it was crazy. It just shows that um, if you be consistent, you know what I'm saying? Look look at his success. Of course, yeah. How long has he been on the grind? Like, I obviously know of him, yeah, but I haven't looked into like the full story. Yeah, he's been bro, for years, man. Yeah. Been about for years, him and Gino, young custom model, everyone. Yeah. In the Brooklyn scene. Yeah, facts. So what yeah. about the... I know you've worked with a lot of like local artists as well. I know you've done a lot of work with Tunde. Is that just someone that you know personally? Um, Yeah. No, Tunde, I met at a video shoot, one of his video shoots. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Cole for, for bringing me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was, I don't remember when, it was about a year, two years ago. No, three years ago, I'm not sure. But yeah, Tunde, man, I met him at a video shoot. And from there, we just got in the studio. Yeah. With American artists. Do you know, I don't know if you know Joe Blow. The name rings a bell. I can't yeah, think. Yeah, well, Joe Blow from LA anyway, from him and Joe Blow and, and another artist called Lil AJ. Yeah. We was in a session and from there we just worked. From there we built a sound together, do you know what I'm saying? The Detroit. Yeah. The Detroit shoreline just brought it to money, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. That's my little sound there, bro. So he has got his <laughs> own style Tunday. Yeah. You yeah, did you did the, the his last video, didn't you? Um like the uh, freestyle yeah, kind of thing. Duffy. Yeah, yeah, the Daily Duffy. Daily Duffy, that's it, yeah. And that's hit over what how many views is that on now? I think uh, it's well over a million, million, isn't it? Yeah, one point eight million, I think. One point eight million. That's crazy. Yeah. Is that is that the highest yeah, viewed yeah. beat that you've got? Um or like single out there. What about the five year ones? Have they passed that? Five year, yeah, but I'm waiting for the album, man. I can't wait for the album. It's gonna be a mad thing. Oh, you've done a lot of work on Not the new album, right? Yeah, yeah, and his new album is dropping. It should drop soon, man. Yeah. Do you, has he said yeah. a release date? No, I have not got a release date. He said very soon, and him and his team are just talking yeah. coming out soon. Yeah. I think he posted on Instagram as well about it. Right. Yeah, because yeah. that, that'll be big for you, man. Like, because he, yeah, he's, right he's huge right now. Yeah, he's huge right now. He's His last... I forgot which um he had that first music video, not his first one, but the first one that went viral. That I forgot what it was um, called now. The Big Drip. Which one? The Big Drip produced by Axel Beats. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. I think that yeah, was the one that, that went viral. Uh, I don't even know how many yeah, views yeah. that's on now, but that's been going crazy. Nah, that, I don't even think it's on about eighteen mil, I think. Eighteen mil, jeez. Because they his type of beats are the ones that I produce and he was like the keyword that I was going for. But I know yeah, he hasn't put yeah, anything yeah. out in a few months. So I'm waiting for him to drop another project because as soon as an artist drops a project, that's when everyone starts searching for their type of beats. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. So how about YouTube as well? Because, in fact, before we move on to YouTube, let's go through the, the Roddy Rich placement because yeah. that, that's huge as well. So how did that yeah, happen? Well, I'm, well, I'm still waiting for that, man. I'm waiting for his team to hit me back for that. I've got yeah. a song as well. Um, and that was a collab as well, but it wasn't a paid collab. It was one of my homies, one of his producers that I worked with him. Um, from America, LA, so it was through him. So that, that was he another paid club, did you say? No, no, that wasn't a big oh, right, club. Right. Was yeah. Um, I've known him for years, isn't it? And he hit me up saying, yo, let's get a collab. I'm in the studio with um, 
da 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 Roddy uh, O'Connor. And <laughs> him and Roddy actually jumped on the song. Yeah. That's produced crazy. by him and he recorded it as well. I was like, that's mad. That's mad. That's because yeah. he, he's another one that's just huge right now. So Yeah, he's actually mad, bro. Bro, you're building up your portfolio to something crazy. And I, I imagine know, like the more the more credits that you get under your name, yeah. the more that you've got on your socials, that just brings just so many more people to you. Because people as soon as they go on your yeah. page, they'll be like, Yo, he's worked with this person, this person. So yeah, who is this producer? I, I want to work bro. with him. Mm. Yeah, definitely. That's what it is, bro. They're just having credits and credentials for yourself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a catalog yeah. And who you work with. Of course, yeah. What about for, for new producers though? Because Obviously, everyone wants them placements. Everyone wants to get them yeah. them credits. But for new producers, it's obviously a bit hard. So let's say that someone's someone's beats are actually good. They've been producing for a few yeah. years. They're at their stage where they want to start getting artists on the beats. What do you think is the best direction for them to take? The best direction is, bro, um, just collabs. Collabs with new like producers that are already out there and paid yeah. collabs is the way, bro. Paid collabs. That's how I started my whole career paid, through a paid collab. Yeah. To a, to a producer who ripped me off, took my tag out, and didn't give me no credit, yeah. made me motivate me to go more. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, go course. more harder and never stopped. And from from there, bro, it opened doors and doors for me. And I just kept on going. But yeah, collabs is the one man. Yeah, telling me. yeah. Producers get them collabs going, man. And now you offer collabs as well, which, which I think is a good service, man. So anyone that's listening, mm-hmm. like, are you still running that? Are you still running that deal? Yeah, I do collabs for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what are you looking for from producers? Just loops? Like just melody loops, drum loops? or Yeah, drill, melody, drill is the one at the minute that I'm yeah. working on. Yeah, back. yeah. So yeah, melody loops. Mainly melody loops. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, melody. So have you worked with any other maybe up-and-coming producers and landed other placements for them? I know you've done a lot of collabs, yeah, but... Yeah. yeah, there's loads, bro. There's, there's one that I met from Blackpool that paid me from collab. Yeah. And this was a, a year ago, a year and a half. I could, I could name so many, bro. There's, there's actually one guy that paid me for a collab a long time ago. Shout out him, man. We did the Rich the Kid one. That's on Wellstar. Yeah. That's over 2 million views. That's crazy. Yeah. Bro, I'm Collab, telling you. Collabs is just the way, isn't it? Collabs is 100% the yeah, way. Collab, bro. Um, you won't even believe this story. Um, so we got a collab. He paid me for a collab. I got him a placement. And Rich the Kid was performing in his country, uh, yeah, like his city, in it. Yeah. And then, um, so he goes, "Yo, boy, I want to go to the show." So I said, "All right." I called up Richie West and John Dredd, and and then, and he was like, "Yo, meet, tell him to meet us at the show." Yeah. And that was through a paid club, and then they got him on stage with him as well. What? Yeah, <laughs> that was him. Yeah, that was dope, bro. That's crazy, man. I think that's one thing that I'm going for this year as well. Even if it's paid collabs, I'm just trying to get, I think like last year I was so focused on just building up like social media, building up YouTube and everything, but I wasn't spending a lot of time working one-on-one with artists or collabing with other people. But I feel like this year, even just from what you're saying now, it's kind of motivating me personally to just collab with as many people as possible. Mm. That's how I'm I'm landing some placements as well. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Not like major, major ones, but I'm starting to get more artists on my beats. And that's through working with other producers, me sending them loops. Because for someone that might might be quite busy and they don't have all the time to like network with people, why not pay someone yeah. that invests all of their time in networking with people or someone like yourself yeah, who's already got good. these connections? Because then you don't have to yeah. be like DMing people like all the time trying to build up these connections. You can just pay someone, do the collab with them, and then let them do what they're best at. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. That's that's exactly what I do. I mean, make beats in my own time, and um, producers that hit me up, I say, yeah, just send me them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Get placements all the time, bro. It's quite easy for me. Yeah, I'm not being big headed, bro, but it is really easy for me because I've got that net, that connections that I work with. Yeah, so I just offer it to producers, bro. Well, of course, you, you've, you've earned that. Them. You've earned that. It's been five years of grinding. You've got them, them placements. Um, you yeah. can tell that you're dedicated and it's just one of them things just build, building up connections isn't it you've got this network of people yeah, now so they're obviously coming back to you for beats so, like a lot of people like artists they might not be going through the emails all the time just checking beats most of the time they've probably yeah. worked with a producer before and they've had tracks that have done well so then they just go back to that producer and say have you got anything else rather than looking for yeah, new yeah, people all the time yeah, that's what I'm saying bro 
Do you get involved in studio tracks. sessions much when you when you're doing yeah, these tracks? No, I, at first, bro, I didn't really do that. I was just a bedroom studio producer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never really was ner- not nervous, but I didn't want to do it. like I just wanted to stay home with the But now, yeah. for the past two, two, three years, I've been in sessions with artists with Rich the Kid, yeah. Jay Crit, you know, Don Q. There's a lot of them. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Of course. It's better to get yourself in a session, though, bro, because, you know, when you're at home, people don't really know what you're like. Or, but when you're in your session, you can flick through beats, build more connections through the studio session. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Work with different type of artists and just build a network, bro. Build your connections. 100%. Yeah, I feel like people can get too comfortable because it's obviously nice and cozy in your house, isn't it? You can just yeah. sit down, yeah, make your beats, cool. <laughs> send a few DMs, but... Once you actually dive into a studio session, then then you're there with people then. But what about yeah. for, for new producers, though, that don't really know anyone? How could they maybe get into a studio session? So it seems like in America, it's a bit different. There's all these like huge studios. Everyone's just running sessions. People can just hop in and out. They might be in the room next door. It feels like it's not really yeah. like that in the UK, unless I'm missing no, something. It's, mm. it's different in the UK. you you got to make sure that you, you and the artists are building together in a session. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, for new producers, well, just Instagram is the way. Instagram, yeah. build, build your brand as a producer, yeah. network, work with other collab, through other collabs, build with, with upcoming artists as well, not just go for a big placement. Yeah, facts. I feel like that's what I've been doing for, for the last five years, bro, just working with big artists, yeah. not worrying about upcoming artists, but really, bro, upcoming artists, you can build an artist from scratch and blow him up, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. So, I speak yeah. about this a lot as well because a lot of people will just go for the big placements and they might send emails out to, to like Roddy Richard, Five Year For It. Obviously, it's working for yeah, you, but for yeah. a lot of people, that might not work. So maybe the best bit is to start a little bit smaller. Start with some. Yeah, sorry. To be honest, bro, I don't send it through the email. So what I do is when I make a beat, yeah. when I have a drill beat, yeah, I just ring them or FaceTime them or yeah. give them a little text. Maybe I just made a banger for you and they also send it straight home. So I send it to his phone. Mm, that quick personal connection. Emails, it, it gets blocked because imagine how many producers are emailing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't imagine rappers just sitting there either just going through all them emails. They might click on a couple. Yeah, but I'm too many emails. They don't really do that though. They just pull up a beat from either their phone, they, yeah. they email it, they send it to the, straight to the engineer to pull it up. Yeah. How, yeah, that might be a little gem in fact. I, I've heard a lot of people talk about this is to get close with the engineer because a lot of the time yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the engineer yeah, well, that's playing the beats of the yeah. artist, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not really built. like I don't really do that with the engineer, but I've heard a lot of people speak about it on podcasts. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. kind of makes sense though. Kind of makes yeah, sense because like we were just saying, like yeah. people aren't really going through all these emails. They've got work to do. They've got writing to do. But, yeah, that's what I'm saying, I know. Yeah. So get tight with the engineers. And plus the engineers not going to have as many emails because not as many people are sending stuff to them compared to what they're sending to the artist. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. So how about like sync placements? Do you ever go for anything like that to get your beats on? Like maybe TV um, ads or has that I've ever had happened? My, I've had my beat on the biggest TV show in America, Love and Hip Hop. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know the show. Yeah, I've had that through, that's through Safari. I don't know if you heard of him. From New York. I don't think I, I think have. it's Nicki Minaj's ex, his husband. Uh, oh, shit. That's big then. Yeah. So how, that how, how did actually, that happen? That was my second placement after the Soldier Boy one. Jeez. How did that happen then? That was, that was through a collab. Um, was it a collab? Yeah. Yeah, he sent, he sent me over some dancehall melodies. So yeah. I, I finished off that, got, it, got him a placement. So. Jeez, you've hooked up a lot of people. I bet from yeah, that definitely. first collab where the guy kind of fucked you over. I bet that's just made yeah. you, well, it motivated yeah, you for a start. That motivated me to go 10 times, 100 times harder. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And it also probably, it also probably made you want to collab with other people and treat them the right way because you, you've had this happen yeah. to you. It's like, I don't want to, I don't want anyone else to go through this. So if it, no, if I ever... Mm. This, this music industry, uh, it's, it's not good, bro. It's, it's all, it's all fake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I just do my, me, bro, and work on what I've got going on and just keep it quiet. So I think that's the best thing to do. I think a lot of people stress about what other people are doing. They compare themselves to yeah. others. They're always watching these other people. 
But yeah. everyone's got their own lane. Yeah. Everyone's got their own yeah. journey. Hmm? Especially producers hiding behind like yeah. the wall, looking at the producers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> of course. Watching what they got going on. I know. Not focusing on themselves. Yeah. Everyone's got their own yeah. lane. Like it, it could take someone a year to blow up. It could take someone five, ten years yeah, to blow up. Like yeah. you, you just don't know. Literally, the the only thing you could do is try as hard as you possibly can. Do everything that you can. Network yeah. with as many people. Collab with people. Invest in yourself. Pay for collabs if you've got the money. And then yeah, you just, you just never and, know. You never know who you meet, who that yeah. collab gets to. Like there's there's so many different ways you can do it. So yeah, I think people need to stop stressing about what other people are doing and just. Focus yeah, on your own stuff. I'm saying that this year, bro, like for the past five, six years, I've been chasing placements. Yeah. And I thought to myself, why am I, why am I not working with upcoming artists? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I started working with upcoming artists, building relationships. Building relationships is the key. Yeah. To connect, you know what I'm saying? Having relationships with artists is the best. Um, but yeah, building relationships. But this year, I just want to focus on YouTube. Like, you see how you've been focusing on your YouTube and brand. Yeah. That's what I've been trying to do focus on youtube and it's more sales you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i know we spoke about this a little bit the other day because i know yeah. we've, we've getting placements it can be i imagine for one thing like the pay can be kind of long because you have yeah, to deal with the business really side of it you might not get the best percentage yeah. and you've got to wait for the tracks yeah. to come out then you wait to collect your royalties so have you, have you had yeah, some bad experiences yeah. with that yeah definitely bro it's long but wait you gotta wait six months to get your royalties. Yeah. And it's just headache with the paperwork. You know what I'm saying? The contracts, the agreements, the yeah. back and forth. You gotta wait for the, the law. You gotta hit the lawyer up, wait for them to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The back and forth that I don't really like, bro. So I just try to, I wanna this year. I've been doing that for the past five years, paperwork and everything. Yeah. But I'd rather this year, I just focus on my YouTube and building my subscribers. So yeah. I've been trying to do it for years, but I think I've been on and off. So. Yeah, yeah. I had a look on YouTube. I think the first upload was like 2015, was it? Yeah, that's when I started YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So you're probably yeah, just yeah. Up- uploading every now and again at the start, and then you were yeah, uploading I, more further down I, I, the line. At the start, I didn't really know how YouTube works. You know what I'm saying? I used to just post yeah. randomly a few times a day, but now, now I'm posting every day, to be honest. Now I'm trying to get it every day. Yeah, I think that's the best thing to do. Definitely. I'm not even yeah. posting every day at the moment, but if you can post every day, then, and you're using like the same keywords all the time, you're going for the same yeah, type bro. of artist. Yeah, bro. You don't even need to post every day. You got 20,000 20, <laughs> It's a little yeah. bit different with tutorials though, because tutorials are, they're long, aren't they? And the way I saw it was yeah. if, if I put out a video like every day, I'm, yeah. people are like, usually just watch the latest one, don't they, when they go to your channel. So I thought if I'm uploading one every day, the quality might not be as good in each one because I'm probably spending less time on it. And also I just thought maybe I'm fucking it up in a way because I'll upload like one video and before everyone's seen that, I'm uploading another one before everyone watches yeah, that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's like, it's kind of clear. I've got one on Tuesday, one on Thursday, every week at 6 p.m. And I can put a little bit more time into that video. So I know it's going to be a good one for people to watch. Yeah, because then you can schedule it, innit? You know what I'm saying? Schedule yeah. it to drop on that. Yeah, you have exactly. more time to work on it, more time to edit it. Exactly. Make it better. I, I can't lie, like the editing, video, editing videos is, is kind of long. It's kind of long. Yeah. And that it's sometimes I feel long. like that that holds me back in some ways because it stops me from making beats as much. Like I'm not one of them producers that will just be in my room just making beats all day. I'll be like doing videos. I'll be doing like working on sample packs. Um, obviously you know, running like the business that's side. That's what, sorry bro, that's what rappers think we do, isn't it? Yeah. Sit in our bed and make beats all day. Yeah, yeah. But really, bro, being a producer is actually a headache. Yeah. You've got answering emails, answering DMs, getting contracts sorted, getting paperwork done, yeah. uploading to YouTube, making beats, you know, send, send out the placements. Of course. So it's yeah. not easy being a producer, but it's a good grind, man. It is, definitely. How many... Talk me through your usual schedule then. So when you you wake up, like, do you have a usual schedule every day? Do you, you, is it like a certain um, yeah, amount of beats that you want to make? Or? Yeah, I'm in a routine. I wake up, you know what I'm saying? Get the dog walked, sort the dog out. Yeah. Straight away, get cooking, making beats. And literally, that's it. Literally, get studio sessions done. Yeah. See what else I've got to do in the evening about paperwork or contract agreements. Yeah. And literally, that's it, bro. Do you have a do you have a manager by the way? No, I don't have a management. I've been doing independent. Doing everything. For the past yourself. five years. 
yeah. had a lot of uh, managements hit me up and trying to manage me and take me out for dinner and that. But you know, <laughs> it could be a wine and dine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, you know. yeah. Well, obviously, they've seen the credits under your name. They've seen you with some success. Everyone wants a piece of the cake in it. Yo, definitely everyone wants a piece of the cake, man. Now, but bro, for upcoming producers, they will get there, man. Just got to keep focused and look for the long run, not just for the quick, quick money. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Focus on the long term. Of course, man. As a producer, bro, like, think about what, where you're going to be in five years as a producer. Yeah. You never know what can happen, bro. When I first started, I didn't know. When I first made beats, that I'm gonna end up producing for Roddy Rich, the biggest artist in the world. Yeah, Rich the kid, you know what I'm saying? I don't really know, but it's happening, bro. There are a lot coming. Yeah, I hear that. Well, it's one of them things as well. Obviously, you've got to have the passion for it. It's not just like you said; it can't just be a right. I'm in this to get some money. When you started off, you said that it wasn't even about like, oh, I'm gonna be a producer. It was just I just want to make beats. Like I just want to produce. I'm yeah, kind of like this where it takes. Yeah. yeah, it was a hobby. Yeah, but then you would have had that switch at one point where you're like, right, I'm going all out with this now. Can you remember when that mm-hmm. turning point was where you're like, right, I'm actually going to make this a career. I'm going to, yeah, I'm investing everything into it. Well, well, once, once I got my first, was it first or second placement? Once I started getting placements like that, it, yeah. made, it just it made a switch. was like, right, now I need to get myself in a routine and get it sorted. Yeah. So every day I'm promoting, every day I'm sending out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I just started making, making a little little um, thingy for myself of course yeah really so cheap. how about like the in terms of like the business side of music and selling beats yeah. and you know dealing with like royalties and everything because you don't have a manager who's doing it all for you mm-hmm. do you send stuff up yeah. to, to lawyers to look at or is it just one of them things that you had to learn along the way you just kind of dealt with the first no, contract no one told me, when I first started no one told me nothing I didn't know nothing about the music industry yeah. or the business side of music and the uh, business side of music is very important if you don't know the producer, you know what I'm saying? Oh, of course. Um, if any producers need help with that, DM me, I'll help you. I don't mind, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I remember when, it, when, I, when I didn't know any information about that, but yeah, bro. Yeah. I do everything myself and it didn't take me, it took me kind of long to learn. Did you, did you kind of make any mistakes in the past in terms of the, like the business? Did you agree to any yeah, contracts yeah. that you shouldn't have or? Yeah, yeah, a lot, man, a lot. Yeah. No, 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 when I say a lot, I meant like through the first, let's say, first three, four placements, probably yeah. three. Can you remember what the, what the mistakes were? Did you agree to like less publishing? Yeah, or? I don't remember. It was, just, it was, I don't really remember to be honest, but you know what it is, but rappers like to push push it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Rappers and the label and the lawyers, they like to push it, bro. They like to take ages. They like to not agree on paying for the beat or yeah. the publishing. So, but rappers, bro, they don't really want to pay up for it. They don't even like paying for beats, bro. They always want free things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, as a producer, since I was started, I had to do everything by myself, contracts, agreements, royalty yeah. shares, splits, split sheets. So it took me a long time to learn as well, bro. Yeah, there's you know a lot involved, it, man. There's a lot involved. There's a, I forgot yeah. what the book's called, but for any new producers, I'd recommend reading this. Right, let me Google it now whilst I'm here. There's one like main book for music business in the UK. It might just be called Music Business, like UK edition or something like that. Let me find it now. Because I actually read this recently and there's so many things in there. But the book's huge. Oh, this is it. So all you need to know about the music business. The, that, oh, that's actually the US version. And then the UK one is, it's just called Music, the Business. I think the latest one is the 7th edition. There might be a newer one. Anyone that's listening, yeah. read that. It's literally got every yeah. everything in it. Mm. So, did you did you read anything like that, or was it just just Google uh, no, and stuff as it came up? I don't really, I don't really like reading books to be honest. But yeah, bro, yeah. Nah, I wasn't that cool. I just had to learn myself. If you had to break down, like, if for new producers that are listening that have never really researched like royalties and splits. How would you break yeah. it down in like a in a simple way? Like, how would you explain royalties to someone? Because there's obviously different types. It's like, yeah, your mechanical yeah. royalties, and then you, you, you know, you stuff through PRS for like yeah. sync placements and things Obviously, like that. Yeah, bro, definitely. Every producer, if you're from America or UK, make sure you're on BMI or PRS. Yeah. And make sure every time we, every time you make a song or with an artist, you get a split sheet out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Wash yeah. it down and do a split sheet. So you work out the percentages. And who's getting what, and and the splits with the producers that are in it as well. 
Yeah. So to be honest, bro, just make sure that's what you need to make sure that's most important. Working yeah, yeah. with artists. Make um, sure the split sheets are there. So, so what the PR, the PRS PRS collect things like live performances, radio play. Yeah. Um, if it's played on TV, I think. What does BMI collect? The same thing. Same thing. Is it just in in the US? Yeah. Is that where they collect it? Yeah, American one. Oh right, okay, yeah, yeah. So you need BMI. Yeah, there's BMI and there's Ace Cap. I think I said Ace Cap or Ace Cap. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other ones I don't really remember. But I'm on uh, BMI to be honest. I'm PRS. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk about YouTube then, because I know you've kind of you've in a way wanted to make the transition of being like a, a so-called industry producer to a not a YouTube yeah. producer, but you're trying to be more active on there and get online sales as well. Yeah. Is there a reason for wanting to? make that shift is it just so that you can be more in control of of your sales like there's no it's dealing just, with artists it's, it's just to be honest bro I, I don't know i just like i just like to post on youtube and it's just more yeah increase more sales um yeah. that's it dude. i want to grow my subs that's something i wanted to do since i was since i started making beats so i'm saying yeah yeah so my subscribers I feel like I there's been a there's been people. a big shift in the industry anyway like back in the day like years ago, it was mainly about producers just working one on one with artists in the studio. If you weren't doing that, then you weren't really doing anything. But now, that yeah. obviously, with YouTube and Beat Stars and everything, there's this whole other world, and you've got like 16 year olds making a killing yeah. selling beats online. Yeah, so, that's what I'm saying. Mm, so you might have like you might you might sell a beat for like a couple thousand by being like an industry producer. You might get like whatever your fears. I don't know what it is, but then yeah. you can have a beat on beat stars that's getting like a million views on youtube and you're not even selling the exclusives so you're just selling like whatever the lease, the lease is yeah 30 dollar leases 50 dollar leases and that's just like coming in i like imagine how many sales you're getting from a, a video like a beat that's on a million views i don't know how many it yeah, would be that, but it must be a lot that's what um i think and is it Ant chamberlain Ant chamberlain yeah, yeah that's he what he said on the video he said um you can just lease it as many times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You get a million views, you get two million views, you get paid from either YouTube or YouTube monetization. Yeah. And, yeah. Ads, and also your beat leases, you know what I'm saying? It's more better than that. Yeah. It makes sense. So it kind of puts me off selling exclusives because it could be a slow month and then someone reaches out and they want to buy an exclusive for a couple hundred. And you, at that time, you might think, you know what? Yeah, like the beat's not really doing anything. But at the same time, that beat could pop off in a year's time. You just don't know. Mm. It's always well, like, so, I bet some of your old beats sell a lot more than like the new ones. Ones that you'd even um, least, that you'd least expect. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I get a sale all the time from a beat that I made. You know, I don't know if you hear that, uh, not producer rapper called Rams that blew up a yeah, few yeah. years ago with parking song. Oh, yeah, yeah. I made, a beat, I made a type beat that sells all the time that, yeah. that I made a long time ago. Um, but, bro, um, just as what you were saying before, selling exclusives, that's one thing you don't want to do. Yeah. Unless, unless, unless someone's offering you a, at least a high amount. Yeah. Because, and it's a, do you know what I'm saying? Because it could be a banger and you could sell it and now you've lost out and sell it, leasing it again and again. Yeah. Um, the artist could blow up and you could sell it for the low. Like if you're doing deals on exclusive rights mm. and he gets that deal and then he becomes number one artist in the world of that song. That's yeah. all you're getting, and then you're getting your percentages. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. If you, if you was to if you was to sell it to an artist, but for higher price, then make sure you're getting your what you deserve. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and of your course. percentages, your percentages. Of course, yeah. I think the standard on Beat Stars, um, obviously, w when someone makes an offer for an exclusive, like the standard on Beat Stars, I think it's defaulted at fifty percent. But then the artist can type in what percentage they want to share because yeah. it comes through as an offer doesn't it so it might come through with like 500 pound and you only get 25 percent of the royalties mm. so what, yeah. what would you recommend producers to go for you know if, if the fee is like kind of high say it's something that they've never really had before but then the royalties are, are real low would you still recommend that they do that or do you think it's important to like just just yeah, keep your royalties regardless it's important to keep the royalties you know what i'm saying yeah but at the same time don't even sell exclusives, like, only sell it if you, if you need to to get it. Yeah, yeah. I don't sell my exclusive rights unless it's big labels like Five Year Foreigns or, yeah. you know what I'm saying, like Columbia Records or something. So, yeah, yeah, because that, that, credit, that credit's going to be worth more than what they've paid for the beat anyway. 
Yeah, definitely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They had to get an upfront fee, which is the low or whatever you're selling it for. And then that's all you're getting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've heard that story so many times of people, like, they'll have a beat. Um, maybe it's getting some all right views on YouTube, but it's not really popping off. And then someone offers, like, maybe like 200 for the exclusive. And they yeah. think, you know, I'm just going to take it. The beat's not really doing yeah, anything. The producers that make a mistake, bro, they sell it for $200, not yeah. 200 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And then they get about what, one something, and that's all they're getting. Yeah. And then the beat on YouTube starts taking off, and yeah. it starts getting over a million yeah. views, and then they can't sell anything. <laughs> I've yeah, got a few well, people well. say that. So with you, with like the YouTube game, um, I know the main artist that you've been going for, it's like Manchester artist, isn't it? You've been going for Tunde. Yeah, a Manchester artist. Tunde, Mastermind, Meeks. Yeah. Everyone that's in Manchester right now that's doing bits. So yeah. Yeah. How long have you been doing their type of beats? Roughly. Um, I do Tunde and Meeks type beat mostly because yeah. that's my sound and that's what, we, um, you know what I'm saying, we built in Manchester the sound. Yeah, yeah. So I did the most, but, bro, there was a time, yeah, where I was just working with American artists, mm. and I was thinking, why am I doing that when I'm from the UK? Yeah. And then I just shifted to the UK for now, but like, working with all the, the, at first they were all like upcoming artists, and then we just made a sound and name for themselves, so. Yeah. Well, you were, you were probably doing them before they were blowing up, because... Like me, yeah. he's blown up in the UK right now. He's killing it. Although they're not like worldwide, they're not like huge right now. Sometimes they can be better ones to go for because there's not a lot of competition. Because for people like mm. even like five year, everyone's doing five year type beats. I'm doing them, yeah, which is probably a mistake. But yeah. yeah, everyone's trying to go for these big artists, but they're forgetting that every other producer is also going for these artists. So if you go for the local ones that are maybe still popping off, but more. Just more local, just more low key. Then, as they rise, your producer channel is going to rise as well. I always say it's kind of yeah, like yeah. In investing in a stock. Like if you get one of them companies that is just starting off and you really believe in it, if you put some money in yeah. at that point, when that company rises, you're going to like grow with that company. Do you know what I mean? You're going to make a lot yeah, of money. It's best. It's best to go for these local artists, upcoming artists, because everyone's doing. You know, like future type beats. Everyone, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, yeah. To think about the bigger channels that I already. Popping off that Roddy Rich type beats, future type beats. So what I'm doing right now is working off the upcoming. Well, it wasn't upcoming; they were upcoming at first. Yeah, yeah. So I started doing mix. I was started doing mix into other type beats when nobody started doing it. Yeah. So then I started doing it, and then I, I went off, you know, on and off YouTube. Yeah. But right now I'm just working on every day, just posting mix type beat, mix type beat, tunnel type beat. Yeah. So even though you had that buzz, obviously, like because you're uploading beats now, if someone comes to your channel then they see that beat, then they're going to go to your other ones as well because all of the previous ones that you've been doing are them. That's what I'm you, you see with my YouTube channel, you know what you're getting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know you're getting that sound, that Detroit sound, that, that rap UK rap beat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's all I'm uploading at the minute to grow my YouTube. Mm. I think that's the, that's the key because, again, I get a lot of messages from people asking me to look at the YouTube and they say, why aren't I getting sales? And then I look yeah. at the YouTube and then, the thumbnails for a start always look different. It's like just something completely random every time. The titles are always different. One day they're uploading a boom bat beat. The next day they're uploading yeah. drill. Then they're uploading <laughs> trap or something else. But yeah. you get subscribers because subscribers, like you said, they want to come to the channel and know what to expect. They want to be like, yo, I'm going yeah. to Legendary Keys because he's got this particular sound and I know that any beat that he posts is going to be something that I could fuck with. Yeah, but if, if you were uploading boom bat one day and then EDM the next day, everyone's going to be like, Why? what's going on? <laughs> that's why that's why producers are not going on YouTube. Like, I had to learn from, from years to go on YouTube. Yeah. I've actually met a producer that, but well, I've known this producer for about a year now. And uh, he's only been doing, I think it's a year, he's only been doing YouTube for three months, bro. And when I first met this producer, he had 800 subscribers. Yeah. Bro, three months later, he's at 11k subs. What? Even you know, even eight hundred in the beginning is a lot. Yeah. It can take over a year to, to build up that. I think yeah, is that the one you mentioned the other day? Does he do drill beats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drill yeah. beats, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, he does ride drill beats a So he's he's built up that channel quick then. Did he share any sauce with you? Did he kind of say the same thing? Like yeah, he gave me the sauce, bro. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He gave me the sauce, uh, good thumbnails, good um make sure your thumbnails stand out and eye catching. Yeah. Um, make sure your beats are hard. And upload all the time at the same time with yeah, good yeah. keywords. You know what I'm saying? 
good yeah. tags. Do you use any of them tools like vidIQ and TubeBuddy to build um, keywords? Yeah, I got vidIQ, but I don't really use it. Yeah. I feel like it's it's good like at the start to give you a, a bit of an idea, but it's, it, I don't think it's that accurate. I don't think... Yeah. Because YouTube don't yeah, really no, share I, the data, I don't, do they? I don't, nah, I don't think so. I, everyone's telling me vidIQ, what's the other one? TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy, yeah. Yeah, I don't use them at all, bro. I just upload with the tags that I made... Uh, that I made and just keep uploading every day the same times. Yeah. At 7 p.m. That, that's what I do as well, 7 p.m. But I'm doing that every yeah, other day yeah. at the moment. I need to I need to switch it up and start doing every day because I always preach it to people. I'm saying you need to be uploading every day. But yeah, I well, you can just, you, know, you can sit back and upload once a week because you've got 26,000 subs. <laughs> not, on my, not on my beat channel, though. I wonder about my, my no, beat channel. Yeah. I need to be uploading every day on my beat channel. But I think because I'm running the other channel with the tutorials, like, yeah. like that just takes up a lot of time so but we'll see i'm not one of them producers either who makes like 10 beats every day like that's I what i used to do bro i used to literally make 10 beats a day like i used to try and stress myself out and yeah i need to get 10 beats done i need to get 10 beats done but then i figured out myself why not just make three or five four you know what i'm saying yeah or even two to be honest, two in a day you got one to send out and you got one to put on youtube of course yeah and plus, if you're just but doing two a day, you've got more time to spend on them beats. You can probably, yeah. they're, they're going to be better. I feel like if you're trying to yeah. bang out like 10 beats yeah, every day, yeah, yeah. you're going to rush it and the quality might dip a little bit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The more time you spend on the beat is the best to that. When you upload it, definitely on sale. Because you, you, you've spent time on the beat. You've not just rushed it to bang it out. Yeah, of course. I feel like that's, that's what a lot of people will do. They get stressed out because like, ah, I haven't, I haven't made ten beats today, and they'll, they'll just like yeah, fire yeah, up yeah. any old melody that is kind of shit, and they just upload it for the sake yeah. of it. So it's yeah, I think you're right there. What about let's get into like the technical side then? Like when you open FL, what are some of your like go to plugins? I know when I was listening uh, to your beats, I know you like pianos. You've got that sick like yeah. UK piano kind of. Uh, vibe. So the plugins that I use that are my go to ones are Nexus Three. Nexus yeah. Two and Purity. I know they're the most, the most easy to get, and yeah, I don't, man. I don't really use Atmosphere and, and all them. So it's ne- I haven't even tried Nexus yeah, Three. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even tried Nexus Three yet. I'm guessing yeah. it's good then. Yeah, it's really good, man. And Purity, good Purity is an old school one as well. Purity's been yeah, around for a while. Because of the, you know, the, the UK rap beats that I made, the Detroit song. Yeah, I had to get a bass from there. The bass from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't even think I've used it for the bass. I've, I think I've got it sitting there, but I just never really used it properly because I've been... It, it comes good for that Detroit bass, you know, the T Grizzly type bass. Yeah, yeah. There's one plug-in, I think it's got synth. I like to use it. I need, I need to try that. How about drums as well? Have you got a go-to drum kit? Uh, Yeah, I've been using the same drum kit for time. I bet no one knew that. <laughs> Well, I don't really bother about drum kits to be honest, bro. It's about like how you I, use the sound. Got, um, I used to get my drum kits from Cash Money AP, from you know the big producers and that. Yeah. And that. yeah. Um, well, that was time ago. Now I just use my. I want to. I'm gonna bring out a drum kit very soon, actually. To be honest. Oh yeah. Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's a good thing to do, man. I don't remember I should or not, but. Yeah, it's it is a it's a good thing to do because I think just having multiple revenue streams is just just sick overall because. Like, if one thing starts lacking, like, you've got a month where beat sales aren't doing as good. Yeah, you've got something else to stand on, do you get me? Yeah, of course. Of course, that's why I've been doing it. And to be honest, like, drum kits sell a lot more than my actual beats, but I think that's down to my that's YouTube right. channel, the tutorial channel, like, just growing so much. Um, Most of my traffic comes from there. Yeah. That's yeah. mad, though. Have you got Wouldn't a plan? That Say that again. So I didn't even expect that. I thought your beats sell more. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I think I think like I said, yeah. I think it is just down to the the other YouTube channel just growing so much. The tutorial side, because obviously that one's aimed at producers a lot of the time. Because yeah. I, I was using my own drums anyway. I'm kind of like geeky with it. Like I get all technical. I get into sound design and everything. So I was using no, my own drums it. anyway. And then when you start doing tutorials, people see the sounds that you're using in the tutorials. You yeah. proving that you're making fire beats with them. So then people want the sounds that you're using. So it kind of yeah, makes sense. Cool. Kind of makes sense. But the beat channel, is, I definitely want to get the beat channel growing because I see the tutorial one popping off, but then the beat one's just not going like 
as fast. The big one, I, think, I think the beat bro, to, to get your channel popping is hard though because every, every, they think of it there's millions of producers in across the countries yeah. and they're all doing beats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They're all doing one year type beats, feature type beats. You know what I'm saying? All these type beats. Yeah. So you just got to pick one or two artists and just focus on it. Yeah. Yeah, facts. That's what, what mm-hmm. everyone's kind of said to me as well. I was joining, yeah. like speaking of Ant Chamberlain, in fact, I was joining one of his live streams because he's got, he does this course for producers and same thing with yeah, investing yeah. in yourself, even though like, points. yeah, a hundred points. Yeah. So obviously, even though I teach, I, I still don't think that I know everything. I still like to learn from other people. So when I see things like that, I like investing in courses, I like investing in stuff like that, just to see how other people do it. Um, and yeah, he was dropping some gems in the course. But that was the same thing that he did because he did a marketing video and he was just telling everyone about how you should only be picking one artist, two artists max. Like everything should just be the same all the time. Like obviously with the way that your thumbnails look. In fact, to be honest, with the thumbnails, he don't even really... He doesn't yeah, he create does thumbnails. Really nah. He just used he choose the tube. Yeah. Have you he seen that? Time, sorry. I was just going to say, have you seen um, that website, Tunes the Tube, where you just drag in the MP3, you drag in the picture, and then it makes the video you know, for you? I've seen a lot of people do that, but no. That's, it's, it's a time saver. Like, I, ha- I don't use it personally, but I feel like I need to because right now I make videos in FL. Do you know that Z Game yeah. Visualizer? Have you used yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nah, I used it when I first started making beats. <laughs> Never used it again. Yeah. So you have to wait for a while for the video to export, obviously. But with Tunes to Tube, you literally just drag in the MP3, drag in the picture, yeah. and it's linked to your YouTube account. So as soon as you drag them in, it just creates the video for you and uploads it. So you don't have to sit around yeah, waiting for the video to render. That could yeah, be a real, real time saver, that. So yeah, I think just... Yeah, I use... It I use um, I make the picture and I just bang it on. I use to be honest, boy. If I tell you this, it's gonna be mad. I put it through my phone, so I use it on my phone to make the video and then upload it through my phone and edit on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems kind of long if you're working on a laptop. How come you don't no, just do it on a no. laptop? Yeah, it's just long. Bro. I don't know. I just, it's just faster bro, for me. Yeah, I suppose it's whatever you get used to in it. Like if you're used to doing yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know your workflow. So that makes sense. Definitely. So how about like your plans moving forward then apart from the, the YouTube channel? Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Because you've got you've got the drum kit um, dropping, hopefully at some point, a big project with Five Year Foreign. Yeah, Five Year Foreign's album is dropping very soon. Um I've got I'm actually doing my own UK and USA um produ- not producer tape, but like a tape. Yeah. Like an album. Yeah. Um again, I'm gonna get features legendary keys featuring this and this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. bringing two UK and American artists together shooting a video and putting it all out. That's what I'm working on at the minute. Getting some big names on there. Mm, that's that's a big move. That's Very a big, big move. Name, but... not, I guess there's probably not much you can say on it right now, is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one of them. But still though, I think I think that's a sick move for, for any producer once they start making a once they start building up that personal brand, because then they can release yeah. projects under their own name. And it's not just that artist. Cause sometimes a lot of the times producers don't even get credited. They might get like credits where they can like collect royalties, but on the YouTube channel, yeah. they're not even mentioning the producer. But if you're acting more yeah, as the artist, artists don't, like, mm. artist don't like to mention our producer. They don't like giving us credit, so we have to make sure we get our credits and yeah, you know, get our payments and yeah. But if not, we just take it down. And then it can be you featuring the artist, so like you're the yeah. main artist really, and you're featuring these artists on your beats. I think that's going to be the what, way forward. Uh, yeah, it's kind of what DJ Khaled does, doesn't it? Like DJ Khaled, Edge, yeah, Chris yeah. Brown. Yeah. So me saying that everyone calls me DJ Khaled. <laughs> Yo, does, does Khaled, I know he, he must make beats, but it seems like Khaled's more of a, he just like brings everyone into the room. He kind of orchestrates it all and like tells people what to do. Like he's yeah, got yeah, ideas for the hook and everything. Man. Yeah, yeah. Like but does he actually, he must actually make beats though. No, I don't think he does, but I think he does. does I he think not? he's got a producer that he pays. Yeah. Do they sort of that? Because, look, I don't get how he... I think he just brings artists together, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of like what no, an old school like producer was, in a way. Because like, producers weren't always like beat makers. They were that guy that was just yeah. in the studio, just pulling everyone together, bringing session musicians in, telling people like what yeah. to do. But he knows how to make a hit, so it obviously works. Because people want to work with him because everyone wants a hit, don't they? So 
work yeah, with Khalid, listen to what he's saying, and then yeah, you've got a hit straight away. So yeah, yeah, bro. it's still a skill. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. That's what kind of what I'm doing. But I'm getting probably upcoming artists, but I've got some big names on this album. So yeah, I'm just trying to put it together in it and, and release date and get a cover art and shoot videos. That's my main. Do you know roughly when you're looking to drop it? Um, in the middle of this year. Yeah. I'm just getting everything together at the minute. I've got one or two features started. And, but yeah, bro. And I've also got more big placements on the way as well. So yeah, I yeah. don't really want to speak about it. I just want to let it, let it happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. Of course. Sounds like you've got some exciting stuff happening there, man. Just going back to that thing as well, with people not wanting to credit producers. That always bugs yeah. me, man, when I'm watching a video and there's just no mention of the producer. I don't I don't get why yeah. they don't want to do it. It's like they don't want to add this extra it. name, like it's going to make the title yeah. look ugly or the something. Thing, the I don't thing get thing it. They're doing it for the favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they have to pay for it. If you give them for free, then they'll, they'll do it happily. But if they pay, if you pay, if they pay you for the beat, yeah. then they think they're doing you a favor. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't get it myself, bro. It's, it's going to keep going. Now. That's going to keep going. By crediting the producer, it's only going to help them because it's going to have your name in the video as well. So if people are searching your name, then their video is mm-hmm. also going to come up. And it's also just going to... I don't, I don't know. Uh, I said it's too big-headed, isn't it? <laughs> you don't want to give our, our credits to... I've heard a lot of stories where producers are not getting their credits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess that's another so reason why you wanted to get... Not out of the industry, but just kind of just... You want to... You want to be the boss of it, essentially, don't you? You want to like run your own shit and not worry about what everyone else is doing. You just want to kind of build up your own. No, I've been, I've been running my own home for the past five years. I don't have a management. I'm independent. Yeah, I've been doing everything by myself. But that's the reason why I wanted to move to YouTube just to give myself a break from that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's probably dealing with that is a headache, bro. Yeah, I was just honest, about to I'll say less that. less headache is probably the main reason. Yeah. Isn't it? But yeah, bro, I think we've been through pretty much everything. We've gone through your placements, like the YouTube getting working with artists, everything that I kind of wanted to go through with you. So, well, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. I think you've dropped some major nah, gems for people. Nah, Anytime, man. I think you've helped a lot of producers out. I think it's going to be another one that people want to listen yeah, to. So, yeah, yeah bro, I appreciate yeah, you coming on. Yeah. And just before you go, just let everyone know where they can find you. Like, let everyone know what your socials are. You can find me on Legendary Keys on everything, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, so, yeah, they're the main ones, Legendary right? Keys. Everyone, go follow him up. Legendary Keys, it's been good having you, bro. Much love. I'll speak nah, to you soon. Nah. All right, one.